my slide is visible yes yes please start okay yes. so i am starting yes so uh, my patient is uh, she is 55 year female patient she is housewife from tonk rajasthan and she has come with uh, chief complaints of progressive jaundice colitis and decrease in appetite and weight, weight loss for one month so all the students are able to see ankur's slides because uh, yes they are very good okay today we are doing it from a different room so i just wanted to check okay please carry on history of presenting illness uh, she was apparently all right before one month uh, then she noticed yellowish discoloration of urine progressively increasing in volume is clear and hands also there was no any waxing waning pattern and it was not associated with clay colored stools and it was uh, it was associated with pruritus all over the body and she also gives history of fever for one day associated with chills one month back for which she took medicine from pharmacy and and fever got subsided and there is associated loss of weight uh, loss of appetite uh, she used to eat means two chapati previously now she is able to eat only half chapati and weight loss of 55 to 45 kg in one month there is no history of pain abdomen vomiting abdomen fullness hematemesis bleeding per rectum cough or breathlessness past history there is no any similar complaints in the past and she is hypertensive for five diabetes mellitus tuberculosis asthma no surgery in the past personal uh, she is vegetarian bowel bladder habits are normal and family history is not significant sir so, summarizing my history the old female patient presented with complaints of painless progressive jaundice pruritus resolved cholangitis associated with significant loss of weight and appetite so what do you think uh, sir means uh, she is probably means having uh, means surgical obstructive jaundice probably malignant etiology and i would keep my different i would like to give my differential diagnosis uh, it can be means uh, periampullary carcinoma it can be cholangio carcinoma it can be carcinoma head of pancreas or uh, it can be it means less likely or carcinoma gallbladder also so why is this, why do you say it is surgical obstructive jaundice sir because it is completely means progressive nature and progressive nature of jaundice sir mainly and it was associated with cholangi cholangitis also for means for one day she told so progressive jaundice always means surgical obstructive jaundice no sir usually means obstructive jaundice is associated with clay colored stool means when bile is not coming into the intestine so usually associated with clay colored stool when and Use means obstructive jaundice, sir. So when we ask this question that why do you say it is surgical obstructive jaundice? Basically, we want to know from you that what are the differences between medical and surgical jaundice, and then you say that these features are there in this case and these features are not there in this case. So would you like to answer again that what is how do you differentiate between medical, sir? sir medical jaundice is usually associated with prodromal symptoms sir fever and means anorexia and uh, hello sir am i audible hello hello ma'am am i audible ma'am anko you are audible to me but dr kapoor's uh, there seems to be some internet problem at dr kapoor's end i think okay, okay, I, okay. i think okay. he uh, i think he is trying to log in again okay okay
sorry we lost connection in between so the question was ankur you can hear me now ha, yes sir yes sir now i can hear you sir what are the prodromal symptoms sir uh, means anorexia weakness and uh, so it can be associated with fever also in medical jaundice uh yeah so when we say medical jaundice it includes both pre hepatic that is hemolytic and hepatic which is usually hepatitis so these prodromal symptoms are in hepatitis especially viral uh, hepatitis uh, which is the commonest cause of jaundice as it is um, so one is prodromal symptoms okay what else how do you differentiate between medical and surgical jaundice sir uh, so what patient is means uh, in pre hepatic uh, means pre hepatic causes in hemolytic anemia patient can present with anemia and uh, there will be means uh, morely means uh, indirect bilirubin will be high in surgical jaundice direct will that is on investigation we are at the moment discussing only history so in history yes you can have features of anemia yes. and jaundice is usually mild it is not deep jaundice yes and uh, the uh, the most important thing which differentiates between medical and surgical is high colored urine clay colored stool pruritus but at the same time you have to remember that at some stage in hepatitis also there is intra hepatic cholestasis and during that phase all these features can be present so in a short duration history sometimes it may be difficult based on history alone to differentiate between an ongoing hepatitis and a surgical obstructive jaundice okay sir why do you say this is malignant sir so she is uh, elderly female with associated significant loss of weight and appetite and she is having progressive nature of jaundice that's why right, do you know what is the who definition of elderly sir uh, more than 55 sir 55 yes, definitely sir 60 65 sir 65 i think they, 65 yeah i don't also don't know exactly but 55 definitely is not and then age you have to take into account uh, in relation to the life expectancy so do you know what is the life expectancy of uh, people in india today so i am not 100% sure but around 7 75 70 Yes. I mean, more yeah. little more in females and little less in yeah. males okay dr richa is smiling richa you want to add anything uh at uh, so when he was enumerating the differential differentiating features between uh, surgical and medical jaundice i think in his summary slide he has already mentioned those features so pruri- disproportionate pruritus cholangitis if you are very sure that that was cholangitis and uh, of course your patient had painless jaundice but if the patient had pain then that is a feature that goes in favor of surgical jaundice and uh, as dr kapoor said clay colored stool i was smiling because uh, um, definition of elderly is i think 60 plus otherwise all of us are any anyway elderly <laughs> people like me dr kapoor dr sarav it is always in relation to the presenter's age so for you 55 may be elderly for me 55 may be young <laughs> so okay uh, so uh, pain now uh, dr richa said that if there is pain then you think more of surgical obstructive jaundice but again you have to remember that in hepatitis because there is inflammatory edema and uh, enlargement of liver there can be pain of stretching of the liver capsule but the character of that pain is different from pain of biliary obstruction okay other is fever as she rightly said if you think because you said that she had fever with high grade sorry high grade fever with chills and rigors which is more suggestive of cholangitis as opposed to a low grade fever of prodrome of hepatitis yes. so these subtle differences in the symptoms also suggest as to what you are dealing with now cholangitis cholangitis suggests benign or malignant obstructive jaundice 
cholangitis can in it can be seen in both but where is it more likely benign or... yes sir yes sir yes sir in benign no no benign because benign yes. biliary obstruction is intermittent obstruction classically cholangitis is said to be a feature of cvd stone yes then you have a cholidocal cyst you have a biliary stricture so incomplete obstruction is more likely to give rise to cholangitis if you read some of the older textbooks or older editions of textbooks they say this is a differentiating feature between benign and malignant because at that time the perception was that malignant jaundice doesn't cause cholangitis but that is not true the cholangitis is seen in malignant obstruction also but it is less frequently seen so presence or absence of cholangitis doesn't usually help in saying whether it is benign or malignant but yes a significant weight loss with anorexia uh, is definitely suggestive that it is likely to be malignant what is significant weight loss uh, sir more than 10% of body weight in 6 uh, months but here you have a patient who has only one month history suppose uh, suppose this within yeah so is there any other definition yeah. one is 10% in 6 months anything else if the history is shorter so some text mention 5% in 3 months or 2 kg in a month with and all this has to be unintentional weight loss that means patient did not make any effort to lose weight it has to be unintentional weight loss okay, okay? yes so all of you please send me a mail uh, you know my mail address vkkapoor.india@gmail.com i'll send you the preliminary chapters uh, which tell you how to describe history how to present history how to do general physical examination and uh, all the interpretation okay yeah carry on rajendra you want to add anything ajay you want to add anything i think uh, for uh, any obstructive jaundice to be called as uh, surgically obstructive jaundice for any jaundice one is absence of prodromal symptoms second is definitely pruritus clay colored stools and uh, the patient usually will have subtle signs that he is not having a medical illness by meaning to say a disease which has been waxing and waning a small degree of disease it is not very severe illness and definitely pruritus is a very very important marker definitely after that we can go for the investigations and uh, take my words i have recently burned my finger to the patient having a increased uh, alkaline phosphate ggt and uh, um, uh, increased direct bilirubin and still had medical jaundice so don't go just by lab investigations this is very important the patient did not have pruritus as well as the clay colored suits so go by the go by the mixture of the both clinical as well as by the investigation findings Yeah. So many of the other points of history, uh, etc., are there in these chapters. We will not go into those details. I'll send you those chapters. Carry on. Uh, Sir, general examination: patient is conscious, cooperative, oriented to time, place, person, and moderately built, moderately nourished. Height of one point four nine, weight forty five kg, BMI of twenty point two seven. Performance status one: she is actress was present and scratch mark was present over the abdomen and leg. she was not failed no cyanosis uh, clubbing pedal edema no supra clavicular nephropathy vitals uh, pulse bp temperature respiratory it was normal as a general comment uh, most values are mentioned in uh, full number so there is no point in saying bmi 20.27 i'm sure when you calculated it must have said 20.275643 whatever so uh, except for hemoglobin or some other values whatever we measure in day to day practice up to that decimal only very rarely it goes beyond one decimal and uh, no supra clavicular lymphadenopathy so only supra clavicular or you want to add something sir no significant uh, general means lymphadenopathy sir no no supra clavicular left supra clavicular yes it? sir okay. left so you should say left supra clavicular these are small small points at in at the mch level exam you should not get stuck at these things so your presentation as far as these things are concerned should be very smooth so again i today we will not go into those details uh, we will uh, carry on yes abdomen inspection abdomen is flat umbilicus is central and inverted all quadrants moving equally with respiration 
no any visible lump peristalsis or dilated vein hernia or if so free palpation abdomen not warm not tender gallbladder was palpable in right hypochondriac region it was 3 into 3 cm globular shape non tender form consistency smooth surface side to side mobility it was moving with respiration no any other lump was palpable no hepato splenomegaly and no palpable thrill percussion liver span was 12 cm auscultation bowel sounds were heard and digital rex on digital rectal examination finger was stained with yellow color stool there was no deposits and other systemic examination with were in normal limit anything you have missed on percussion you said there is Sir. no clue. go back go back to palpation you said no palpable thrill what does it mean just for uh, means for ascites i so all patients with ascites will have palpable thrill no sir only massive massive ascites so if there is moderate or minimal ascites then how do you detect it on clinical examination sir means one is sir we can do knee elbow means if minimal is there sir knee elbow position we can or shifting dullness we can see uh, so dullness yeah. of the flanks but you did not mention go, go to the next percussion you okay uh, so you should take examination anything else specific you have have said sir your your uh, uh, finger stained with yellow colored stool but it would be good to say that there is no evidence no. of bulina because whatever negative hello hello that also tells us that what is going on in your mind and what you were looking for hello uh, i can hear you but is are you able to hear sir me? no sir in the last some means seconds okay. now your voice was breaking yeah. sir okay so i wanted to know that out of the three systems which you examined cnatory and cns which one is the most important sir one is sir she is means all systems are is equally important sir respiratory system Everything is important but question is which is the most important so you have to pick one sir for means chest uh, means metastasis or respiratory system is more important what did you examine or what were you looking for in the chest respiratory system so where other sounds were there and any added sounds were there and plural if you means if means if means uh, breath means this respiratory sounds were absent on a, any side because of effusion yeah so uh, in a patient to with suspected malignancy when you are examining the chest you are looking for pleural effusion because pulmonary nodules or pulmonary metastasis clinically will not usually give rise to any finding they will be yes, detected sir. only on imaging the only clinical finding which you can detect is a, a, a pleural effusion so if you have findings of pleural effusion especially unilateral pleural effusion in the absence of pedal edema in the absence of ascites in the absence of anasarca it becomes suspicious and what are the findings of pleural effusion sir means uh, breath sounds may be absent on that side and the tympanic note will, will be absent it will be dull on percussion in the chest do you get tympanic note what is the normal note on percussion of the chest sir so, tympanic note oh. over the lung fields it is resonant ha ah, sir sorry resonant sir common. yes sir sorry resonant what do you do first you do percussion first see this is how you get stuck at uh, mbbs level questions these are all mbbs level questions so you should have said that findings of pleural effusion so repeat of what we did findings of pleural effusion in respiratory examination are decreased expansion of the chest either on inspection or on palpation 
dull note on percussion instead of the normal resonant note and diminished breath sound if you had said that there will be no questions asked okay so yes. please make an attempt to have your history and clinical uh, examination presentation smooth without any interruption and i always quote the example of one of our former students dr gajanan vagolikar who is in pune in his final mch exam in all the four cases till we reached up to what is the diagnosis no questions were asked okay carry on uh, a summary yes. uh, 55 she is 55 year old female hypertensive performance status of 1 presented with painless progressive jaundice pruritus resolved cholangitis associated with loss of significant loss of weight and appetite and on examination she was ectric and scratch mark and palpable she is having palpable gallbladder so you go back to the description of the gallbladder lump yes what do you think this is and what is its significance sir mostly it was palpable gallbladder sir and means uh, a biliary obstruction at the means uh, means lower end of cbd we can think of so if you feel a lump in the right upper abdomen it is always so it is palpable gallbladder but what what can it be what is its connotation what is its interpretation so lower hilar block sir. lower hilar there is no nothing no sir means means at means distal cbd uh, lower biliary or lower biliary obstruction Yes. So, a distended or a, a, a palpable gallbladder always means a lower end block. No, sir. Not always. It means in neck mal gallbladder malignancy or mid CBD cholangiocarcinoma also it can be distended, sir. Any other condition which can give rise to a palpable gallbladder or GB lump? Sir, uh, impacted means means impacted stones, sir. You could see. Yes, sir. Mucosal and it could be a GB mass, which is yes, palpable. Sir. So when yes. you have a lump in the right upper abdomen, palpable, you have to first ascertain that it is a gallbladder lump. Then you have to discern whether it is a distended gallbladder or whether it is a GB mass which is palpable. If you have a tumor in the fundus and body in a thin built patient, you can palpate the gallbladder lump, but that is different from a distended gallbladder. Yes. So how do you differentiate between a GB mass and a distended gallbladder? On clinical, sir, yeah. clinically it will be means difficult. But if it is a smooth surface, regular, it will more irregular shape. Uh, sir, means irregular surface is there. Then there is chances of malignancy we can suspect. So if it is a smooth. taking the shape of gallbladder that means it is oval it is globular if it has side to side mobility then it is likely to be a distended gallbladder which is either a mucosal because of a stone impacted in the neck or because of a tumor in the neck or in a patient like this a lower end biliary block okay mm -hmm. on the yes. other hand if it is and it is soft to firm on the other hand if it is firm to hard it is not taking the shape of gallbladder it doesn't have side side mobility then it is more likely to be a gb mass but for self said sometimes it may be difficult because a very tense distended gallbladder can be firm and also can be firm so it is not always possible but these are some points which you can say can differentiate so here what do you think is it a distended gallbladder or it is a gb mass so distended gallbladder so distended because it is you have described it as globular firm side to side mobility so more likely to be distended gallbladder okay go on to the differential diagnosis uh sir my differential diagnosis sir first uh, periampullary carcinoma the second can we see a head of pancreas sir and sir so in means periampullary it can be distal means uh, sir only two differentials uh, means periampullary carcinoma and cia head of pancreas 
-hmm. And in periampular, it can be either means uh, distal cholangiocarcinoma. Or Don't go to that means, extent on history alone. History and examination alone, you cannot differentiate yes, which type uh, of periampulary carcinoma it is, except if there is a history of melina. Then yes. you can say that it is likely to be a papillary or a papillary duodenal carcinoma. Yes. But if there is no history of melina, then you cannot differentiate. So don't go to that uh, extent. Sometimes even on imaging, it may not be possible to say which type of periapillary it is. Okay. Yes. So why is it not GBC neck? Or why it is not a mid CBD cholangiocarcinoma? Sir, means, sir, means GB neck uh, mass usually means presents with pain, means uh, B, uh, pain is the means usually presents with pain after one. Cause of pain, sir. And uh, jaundice also is uh, in. Hello? Why do patients with gallbladder cancer have pain? When do they have pain? Sir, pain can be due to means stretching of the liver cap. So, liver infiltration, isn't it? When there, when there is liver yes, infiltration, then yes, they will have pain. So, GBC neck patients usually present very early because a small tumor will cause obstruction by infiltration of CBD. So, that is the difference between GBC fundus and body versus GBC neck. GBC fundus and body patients usually have pain. Large number of patients have pain. On the other hand, GBC neck patients usually do not have pain. So they present with painless progressive jaundice like a mid CBD cholangiocarcinoma. And between the two, it is very difficult to differentiate. So when you have painless progressive jaundice, the causes are periampillary carcinoma, GBC neck because GBC is so common with us and a mid CBD cholangiocarcinoma or a hyalur cholangiocarcinoma. But hyalur cholangiocarcinoma is ruled out here because the because, GB is distended. Yes. In hyalur cholangiocarcinoma, GB <coughs> will not be distended. What is the classical presentation of CA head pancreas? Sir, uh, means uh, pain uh, pain. they are also present with sir, uh, pain abdomens. Pain and jaundice, is it? Pain and jaundice. Almost two-third to three-fourth of my head of the pancreas as opposed to periampillary. Periampillary painless, but head pancreas, the classical presentation is pain, jaundice, gastric outlet obstruction, and uh, distended gallbladder, isn't it? So yes. here you are dealing with painless progressive jaundice. So yes. painless progressive jaundice, periampillary carcinoma, hyalur cholangiocarcinoma, GBC neck, and mid CBD cholangiocarcinoma. CA gallbladder and CA pancreas come lower down in the list. If you have pain and jaundice, then CA pancreas, CA gallbladder, and periampillary and cholangiocarcinoma lower down in the list. So that is how, to some extent, you. It's not that you will be right hundred percent of the times, but this is is how you interpret the history and examination. Okay, so this lady comes to you. Can it be a benign disease? Oh, sir, uh, it can be means less likely because it's a short duration history and terms associated short significant loss of weight. And if, if a patient has gallstones and CBD stones, she develops jaundice, she presents to you the next day, she will have one day history. So short duration of history, does it exclude a benign pathology? See, no, most sir. of you say this, but you are wrong. Long duration of history can exclude malignancy, but short duration of history does not suggest malignancy. Okay. okay? Yes. So if I have pain abdomen, I come to you tomorrow, uh, you will say that I am not suffering from a benign disease. That is not true. So don't uh, say that that short duration of history is a point in favor of malignancy. That is not correct. It is the progression of jaundice. It is the anorexia and weight loss which is suggestive malignancy here. So what what suppose so first answer whether it can be benign. If yes, then what can it be?
What is the commonest? Sir, polydocolithiasis. Polydocolithiasis. So why is this not causing stone disease? Sir, usually be uh, means be uh, obstructed. They don't have deep means uh, jaundice, and they, it is not usually associated with pruritus and loss of weight and appetite. Sir, usually it is not associated. But in your examination, did you mention that she has deep jaundice? You just said she has icterus. And does deep jaundice exclude CBD stone? No, sir. It What is the classical not. presentation of CBD stones? Sir, classic pain, fever, and jaundice. Pain, jaundice, and then fever because of cholangitis. Yes, isn't it? So painless progress, and it is intermittent jaundice. Especially yes, especially the duration is long. Pain, intermittent jaundice, and fever. You have pain. She has progressive jaundice. So can you have progressive jaundice in CBD stone? What is why jaundice is intermittent? Why so is it complete? They impacted, sir. Usually means these stones pass pass out because of the means proximal bile flow and this contraction of means gallbladder and yeah, usually sir it is pass jaundice. Why there is intermittent jaundice? It is because the obstruction is temporary. It is relieved. The stone gets simply it causes the jaundice relieves. Then it impacts again. Yes. So an impacted stone at the lower end may rarely present as progressive jaundice, but then painless progressive jaundice is unlikely. And then, as you said, that it is unlike a significant weight loss. Okay. So, sir, can we also add yes, that a yes. well distended palpable gallbladder Gallbladers, is also yes. not very common Agreed. in uh, cholecystitis yes. because it is associated chronic uh, cholecystitis yes. unless and until there is a concomitant impaction of stone at the neck of the gallbladder, something like mirror disease. So, the, the Courvoisier's law that a distended uh, gallbladder virtually rules out a stone disease as the cause of jaundice. Okay. so uh, see uh, many questions are basically asked to assess your analytical ability they are not uh, asked to assess your knowledge they, they are asked to see how you analyze a particular symptom or a sign or a situation and uh, what uh, uh, interpretation do you make okay so she comes to you in the opd what do you do uh, sir i will run two sets of investigation one for general condition Uh, including blood test involving complete blood count involving hemoglobin total count and platelet count and liver function test and pt inr and creatinine of the patients and simultaneously ultrasound abdomen sir first let's see the ultrasound so one second why do an ultrasound because in any case you will do a ct scan why waste time why Sir, ultrasound will show uh, means metastatic features like ascites. Any liver means any space occupying lesions are there, and other things also we can uh, means uh, see on the ultrasound like uh, liver liver eco texture means uh, intrahepatic biliary radicals dilatation. So these things you will see on CT also. Why do we do <coughs> investigations? Sir. it will show means uh, means easy non means non invasive easily available that's why sir just to means uh, um, metastasis can that be easily that is not the answer that is not the answer the answer is if ultrasound shows evidence of metastasis i may not even do a ct scan see if yes. ultrasound shows liver studded with sols i may not even do a ct scan why do a ct scan then you prove that these are metastases and that is all yes in hepato pancreatico biliary malignancies ultrasound is a useful investigation because in some cases it may preclude the need to do further investigation whereas in colorectal malignancy it may not because even in presence of metastasis you will go ahead and investigate and probably do even surgical treatment in esophagus yes. and stomach somewhere in between but in hpb ultrasound is a must because if it shows metastasis 
you may not even proceed with something. Okay, so that is the correct answer. So, can there be one more reason for doing an yes. ultrasound? That uh, the sensitivity of uh, ultrasound in picking up calculi is higher than that of CT. So, in case you pick up calculi, Definitely. your next investigation will be an MR CP rather than a CT. So, that may be another reason why you will begin with ultrasound as a screening investigation. Because you must remember the commonest cause of surgical obstructive jaundice overall is still CBD stones. CBD stones. It is not a polydocal cyst or biliary stricture because we see more of those cases. Now CBD stones are going to gastroenterologists. But commonest cause of jaundice is hepatitis. Commonest cause of surgical jaundice is CBD stones. And commonest cause of malignant surgical obstructive jaundice in North India is gallbladder cancer. Okay, yes. so let's see the ultrasound. Sir, that investigation slide is visible, sir? Uh, not, no, we are still on the summary. Uh, I think from sharing and start. Yes, sir. In the meantime, anybody wants to ask or say anything? Yeah, carry on. We can see now. Uh, sir, ultrasound abdomen, they have put it. Sir, uh, CBD is dilated till distal end and MPD is 2.3 possibility of mass reason at M. Uh, okay, sir. sir, so it means distal biliary obstruction is there. And uh, proximally, the means extra hepatic and uh, means intra hepatic biliary radicals are dilated. And there could be some lesion means uh, distally, but uh, they have not reported about uh, means uh, ascites, means ascites, uh, liver space occupying lesions. Yeah, good. So whenever you are presented with a report, first you should read it, analyze it, and then you should also point out the deficiencies what else you would have wanted to know so in this case you would have wanted to know if there are any SOLs in the liver uh, lymph nodes SITs gallbladder for stones all those things are also important okay yes suppose you saw SOL in the liver ultrasound showed a SOL one or two or three so then it is means probably metastatic disease. So I will. So all I will do. Liver, all SOLs in the liver are metastases. No, sir. Not all, sir. What else can they be? Sir, it could be means polyangular abscess. Some means in. Okay. What else can it be? You pick up hundred people walking on the road. Do they are so? It can mean anything. I mean, sex. It can be a hemangioma, isn't yes. it? So, as well, if not synonymous with metastasis, although. In a present, in a patient where you are suspecting the impression is that it is metastasis. So, how do you say on ultrasound that it is a metastasis and not something else? What features? What will a simple cyst look like on ultrasound? Sir, it is it means uniform hypoechoic lesions, sir. Hypo? With is it hypoechoic? Sir, so hype, sorry, high, high. And echoic. Yes, sorry, uh, and echoic lesion. Simple cysts. And echoic. Sure. So, but well defined hypoechoic lesion. Okay. Yes, sir. What about hemangioma? How does a hemangioma look like on ultrasound? Typical feature, typical finding. <coughs> that word is mentioned, and you know it is hemangioma. Hyper echoic. Sir. Yes, sir. Hi. Okay. Hemangioma, the typical presentation or, or finding on ultrasound is hyperechoic. Polyangular abscess. Uh, means that will be also hyperechoic, but wall will be enhanced. 
maybe wall can be enhancing in peri periphery so so irregular enhancing periphery central is hypoechoic and usually there will be multiple multiple and there has to be recent episode of cholangitis so if there is no recent episode of cholangitis then it is more likely to be a metastasis okay so that is how you interpret uh, sol in the <coughs> liver on ultrasound okay next what will you do so, so what does this ultrasound tell you what is the diagnosis sir means distally distal biliary obstruction because of maybe ca means carcinoma head of pancreas or periampullary carcinoma sir which one is more likely sir periampullary carcinoma yeah because in head pancreas what what else will be there if it is a head sir, pancreas means that uh, mpd would have been dilated MPD sir mpd will be because head pancreas yes. will cause obstruction to both yes sir and if it is a good ultrasound if the patient is thin built if the preparation is good you may even see a mass lesion which is not yes. reported yet. on the other hand periampullary carcinoma now comes the importance of which periampullary carcinoma so what do we mean by periampullary carcinoma sir uh, means within 2 cent 2 cm of the ampullary region which involves distal cholangiocarcinoma mm. and um, this papilla of vetter and duodenal carcinoma and uh, head means uh, uh, means pancreatic head within 2 cm yes so if the cbd is dilated till lower end mpd is not dilated you don't see a mass in the head of the pancreas which is likely sir distal cholangiocarcinoma distal cholangio because if it is ampullary carcinoma or a papillary carcinoma then it is likely to cause obstruction of both the ducts both, both yes. ducts will be dilated the double duct sign double duct sign initially was described for head pancreas but both ducts will be dilated in a ampullary carcinoma ampullary carcinoma so the difference is that in head pancreas because there is a mass in the head of the pancreas and within the mass the ducts are not dilated the two dilated ducts are separated they don't meet each other whereas in a periampullary carcinoma the two dilated ducts come very close to each other so a good ultrasound can tell you whether it is a ca head pancreas or a periampullary carcinoma and to some extent they can even tell you which periampullary carcinoma okay yes anechoic cysts are anechoic yeah that's what i thought so cysts are anechoic metastases are usually hypoechoic cholangular abscess also is hypoechoic hemangioma is hyperechoic okay yeah. yes. the other way you can differentiate between a cholangular abscess and metastasis is that you treat the biliary obstruction you drain the bile duct you give antibiotics repeat the ultrasound after 2 weeks if they resolve they are cholangular abscess if they persist they are likely to be metastasis or you straight away go ahead and do a ultrasound guided fnac okay so depending okay. on the clinical picture and the ultrasound findings you decide what to do yes what next investigation in this case sir i means i told blood investigation sir complete okay then all normal everything normal blood except normal. lft of course blood is given is don't it? don't say blood investigation say i will do a hemogram i yes. will do liver function test i will do coagulation profile be specific don't use vague terms okay. yes okay all that done lft is deranged okay so now sir i will do sir uh, trip, uh, triple phase cct abdomen i means iv uh, with iv contrast and neutral oral contrast sir uh, means cct protocol the radiologist pancreatic protocol sir. say that i know you know but if you don't say it you don't get marks for it so in a patient where you are suspecting a pancreatic or peripancreatic pathology have to use the word pancreatic protocol ct what is the difference sir as sir actually your voice was break so what is the difference between a simple triple phase ct scan or a contrast enhanced ct scan and a pancreatic protocol ct what is specific in the pancreatic protocol sir uh, they are taking means uh, early arterial phase also and uh, which is around oh, means 15 uh, second 
and pancreatic parenchymal phase also delayed arterial phase hello sir before the scanning anything different before the scanning starts is there anything different in the technique sir uh, means they they have to give means more amount of contrast uh, i yeah, means so more iodinated contrast why do you go straight to scanning you need to ask the details from your uh, radiology colleagues or read in my book i don't remember but sir, the difference is that means are they have to give of large volume of contrast yes. given at a high speed so you have to use an infusion pump you cannot do it with hand you cannot do it manually large volume of contrast given at a high speed and proper timing of scanning which includes early arterial delayed arterial portal venous and then a venous phase because the parenchyma will be seen in the arterial delayed arterial delayed arterial and pancreatic pancreas early arterial early arterial i think early arterial and yeah. the other reason for early arterial or arterial phase is that the neuroendocrine tumors if your suspicion is a neuroendocrine tumor they will hyper enhance only in the arterial phase so i think we've already reached yeah, the time two important things in a yeah. factor protocol ct scan one is that the oral contrast that you use in a routine ct scan is not used you use uh, either uh, water yeah. that the contrast and second thing is you need a large volume of contrast is required even for a triple phase ct scan the more important thing is the timing of the ct scan So it is in arterial phase. You don't have two phases in this for a uh, for a pancreas protocol CT scan. It is at seven seconds that you have to take the CT scan films. Other than that, you may take a arterial phase to reconstruct the arteries, then a portal venous phase, and and then the hepatic venous phase. So important is oral contrast and the timing of the CT scan. So another question from Ashwin Kumar. Sir, I have a question. the operative part so and previous also so many sessions are lying incomplete i now don't remember and maybe dr anand has kept it track but all those students whose uh, cases could not be completely discussed up to operative surgery complications and all uh, please revive them and, and ankur you also maybe you can request dr anand that you would like to carry on with this so that we can discuss the further investigations there are a lot of issues to be discussed including uh, uh role of tumor markers uh, pet scan uh, what is borderline of course not in this case but all those things also we need to discuss so don't leave these discussions at half the stage uh, but uh, um, all those students who have incomplete presentations please uh, ask dr anand to slot your remaining part okay okay yes. richa rajen anybody else want to add anything uh, dr chabe and major no chabe wants to add sir ankur just you see i have seen most of the um, uh, surgery students what you do is you uh, all of you should read the prop, a whole uh, ultrasound report uh, of the radiologist and you see they have a pattern they have a standard protocol and if you go in that way we are very unlikely to miss certain findings like you see this is the what you have written but you start from uh, the liver you see they will first uh, as soon as you ask for an obstructive jaundice thing or a jaundice uh, uh, ultrasound they will do the liver first and you you uh, see all the findings in the liver once you have finished the liver come below uh, if there are ihbr uh, dilatation now you know that you you want to uh, see the label of the obstruction so th then you start coming down in the same uh, sitting you see if there are any sols which can be congenital abscess or they can be uh, malignant so uh, secondaries like that what are the uh, the contour of the liver surface your voice is breaking sir continuously i said that what you should follow the protocol as uh, being followed by the radiologist you see they always so you start from the liver finish all the findings in the liver then you are very unlikely to miss some findings then you come below once you have found suppose a, a patient has come as a jaundice uh, you have done a uh, uh, say uh, ultrasound ultrasound shows i are hello you are uh, uh, dilated so then you see the label then you see the label of the obstruction so you start going down but in the liver you finish if are there any sols 
so i just want to say that you follow the protocol being followed by the radiologist then you are very unlikely to miss the uh, findings Okay. Okay. I think we will uh, close this session. Thank you, Ankur. Thank you very much. Thanks, okay. Richard, Thank for you, sir. Attending. Thank you. And uh, 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 I think, Richard, one of these days, maybe you can operative surgery three part. Okay. So we'll ask one of the students to prepare and uh, maybe. Yes. Uh, we will close the session then. Okay, sir. Thank, Thank you. you, sir. Thank you, sir. Okay. Thank you, everybody.